Disney has a secret neuropsychology lab in Austin, Texas, and its entire purpose is to understand your brain and figure out how to trick it. But to truly understand why this lab exists and what they actually do, we need to go back and understand Disney's relationship with psychology from the beginning. During World War II, Disney became a propaganda shop and created thousands of feet of film for six different branches of the US government. One of these films created was called Reason and Emotion. While this film was chock filled with political messages, it's important because it shows the rationale our brains go through when making decisions. It depicts the brain as two people fighting for control, an accountant and a caveman. The accountant is the rational, clear thought, but the caveman is representing our decision making that is controlled by patterns dating back to our hunter-gatherer days. Now the reason that this cartoon is important is because there are modern day world renowned psychologists that have done extensive work on these two decision making rationales. But Disney was exploring the subject when they were children, meaning Disney was way ahead of the game on this line of thinking. They of course didn't invent this line of thought or theory, but it shows that psychology is something they've held on to deeply when it comes to their product and creation. Disney's grasp on psychology and its effects on us is obviously financially motivated, but there's a reason they are able to deeply inject themselves into our brains, and it comes down to one word, story. Storytelling dates back to the dawn of civilization. It is something that is deeply ingrained into our psyche as a human race. And Walt Disney had a love for storytelling, as well as a keen understanding of how to use it to create emotion. In the book, Queens of Animation, it recounts the story of when Walt Disney first pitched the idea of Snow White to the animators and story department of Walt Disney Studios. There was a rule at the studio that when you pitched a story idea, you had to actually act it out in front of them. And Walt was not above his rules. So he gathered everyone in the auditorium and told the story of Snow White as it pertained to his vision. He acted it out and got extremely animated doing the voices. By the end of his story, his employees were hooked and fully invested. He created emotion with the story, which hooked in his team and made Walt's story become their story. The Walt Disney Company has continued to be a storytelling giant often employing techniques that set them apart in the psychological space, and they often follow a formula. Now remember that secret lab I mentioned earlier? It plays in here heavily, but you have to understand how Disney uses storytelling beyond its films first. Storytelling exists in the way that they design their parks and the experiences they craft for you and I to experience. In creating the parks, Disney uses some clever psychology in its design to keep us hooked. When Disneyland was first built, it was designed to be more like a world fair instead of the carnival experience you could find at other theme parks of its time. It focused on immersion and suspension of belief. You entered a fantasy world. They focused on fantasy, American stories of old, technology. Disney's genius was making a fantasy a true emotional reality. These experiences at any other theme park was incredibly rare, and Disneyland mastered the art of telling stories through immersive storytelling. In an article by Fast Company, they reference a book called Walt's Disneyland, written by Chris Nichols. And Nichols says the true art of Disney parks was how you were brought into the story. He said, in Peter Pan's flight, there is no Peter Pan at the start because you are Peter Pan. You're not only in a story, you're living it. So by doing immersive storytelling, it brings you emotionally into the story and therefore makes you emotionally connected. Disney also uses clever urban design methods to sell you as much as possible. They use forced perspective to make the castle buildings seem larger than they really are, or they use colors such as go away green and bye bye blue to hide aspects of the park that might take away from the narrative of the story. It always comes back to story. Legendary Imagineer Joe Rohde once said that every single detail you see on set is there for a purpose. There is nothing on set that does not contribute to telling the story, and Imagineers want you to see it. These details are the focus of books and YouTube channels like yours truly because it's a curiosity and evokes our emotions. The design of the parks is designed in a way that makes you go where they want you to go versus you choosing it. It appears like you have the choice to aimlessly wander around, but because of the way it's designed with the hub as the center, there's no plausible way to get lost, and the theme lands distinctly let you know that you're moving on to a new space. Also, everywhere you look, there's something to buy or eat, and despite Walt Disney not wanting it to appear like a shopping mall, its design encourages spending, and for people to open up their wallets with a smile. And with the introduction of magic bands, they let you just flick your wrist and not even interact with cash or credit card, which completely puts the amount that you're spending out of your mind and lets you focus on the emotion of the transaction. Now beyond design, Disney also finds ways to continue its story via its employees. Meet psychologist Jackie Ogden. I lead our environmental and conservation work 
across our parks and resorts. Jackie's job is to ensure visitors to the Walt Disney World parks have an experience with nature that is magical and meaningful. The company's dozens of theme parks and resorts and cruise ships connect guests to over 7,000 living animals that encompass 400 species. She says that Disney is trying to understand how to better leverage what we know about human behavior to change how people think about the environment and take care of the planet. She oversees shows and experiences that leave guests feeling connected with the world they live in and hopes that they take that experience outside of the parks into their daily lives. She even helped rewrite the Kilimanjaro Safari experience in Animal Kingdom to promote conservation. But why? It comes back to engaging our emotions as the reason we make decisions. And emotions are exactly what the Secret Neuro Lab in Austin, Texas seek to understand when it comes to our behavior patterns and spending decisions. According to the New York Times, Disney picked Austin, Texas because it has a wide range of demographics. The building is a nondescript gray building and is not identified as part of Disney. The facility operates seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and has eight research rooms decorated as living rooms or home offices. Disney's investment into this facility is an estimated low seven figures. So what are they doing? Well, they're studying the brain and how it works with emotion and how it drives their spending patterns. The tools are advanced. They track eye movement, heart rate, skin temperature, facial expressions. They're also testing the way their media and advertisements affect people, how long they watch, what piques their interest. They even track negative reactions to see if an investment they are planning or product is valuable or if it interests consumers. Disney is doing this to further understand our brains and to learn how to market things that we actually want to use and consume. Now, it sounds scary from the outset, but the more that I think about it, the more I think, why wouldn't Disney want to try and sell me things I actually want? Disney understands its customer to a foundational level and uses psychology to offer up what we want and need before we even realize it. Yeah, fundamentally it's about money and how much they can sell us as consumers, but I have to ask myself, does this matter? They use psychology, but it makes me feel good. Entering their large immersive world and becoming part of the story helps me escape. Them knowing what I want before I want allows me to not even think. I walk into a park and I don't have to think about what I'm doing or where I'm going or how I'm going to spend my day. The rush of emotion that is created from the nostalgia keeps me coming back over and over and over. And that's what it really comes down to. Understanding that emotion drives our reason is what sets Disney apart. Evil or not, they are the only company who can make fans open their wallets with a big smile. But sometimes things do go wrong, so you'll want to watch this next video to see my favorite fails and mishaps. I'll see you next time, pal.